Hello, and welcome to my updated item and equipment tier list for Risk of Rain 2 as of April 10th, 2019. Before I begin, I sincerely apologize for the lack of preparedness, objectivity, and, to be blunt, lack of experience I had with the game when I put out the first tier list. There were many inconsistencies and just straight up incorrect rankings on items, and I deserved any and all criticisms on the video. Except for maybe one, you know who you are. If you are one of the many people that commented your criticism, I greatly appreciate your feedback. And at the end of the day, conversation happening on the different items and their synergies, or lack of synergy, was really my only goal with the video. That being said, I aim to address all of the feedback I gathered from last video, and I read every single comment, I promise you, and to make as fair and objective a tier list as possible. Also, the items are ranked based on their synergy with other items, their scaling potential, and their usefulness without a crazy amount of stacks. Everybody knows getting a Sticky Bomb 3D printer 40 minutes in is absolutely nuts, so I'll talk more about the general usefulness of each item. Alright, let's get started. There are six ranks I'll give the items. S, A, B, C, D, and F. So S means it's an amazing item, virtually endlessly stackable, has many, many uses, and good combos with other items. A means it's a versatile choice, has some pretty good synergy with most items. B means it's good, but it's not always useful for your build. C, it has some synergies, but not useful in many situations. D, at least it does something, right? And then F, pick these up simply to turn them into the 3D printer. There's really nothing else you can do with them. So one last thing before we actually get started here, I won't mention changes and ratings between this list and the previous list. As I mentioned in the, the intro to this video, there was a previous list. However, I have unlisted the video because I don't want to confuse anybody with an outdated tier list. So it's as simple as that. Once the developers put in the first balance patch, then I will make sure that I include the old rating of the item and then the updated rank if I update it at all. So let's get started. So starting here with the common items, first is the syringe, and obviously this gets an S if anyone had to doubt. Syringe is extremely useful on everybody, even the Artificer, and the Artificer has a charge-based system on his auto attacks. He can only shoot four, and then they have to wait for them to recharge. So the syringe actually decreases everything to do with cast times on your character. So on the Engineer, your turret placement, your mines on the Artificer, your bolts, your charge of your bomb, your ice wall cast, everything for every character. So anything that has a cast, this thing will speed it up. It's a great item s tier for sure the bear is also an s tier item so it doesn't actually work quite like this and i'll put in the clips now of uh how it actually works it's a logarithmic scaling but essentially these things are nuts so you you get like six or seven of these that's probably the sweet spot but 10 to 15 of these you're starting to get like 60 70 percent chance to block and blocking damage outright is probably the best form of defense behind just moving around and not getting hit in the first place so s tier on the bears Monster Tooth here, I would give this a D on the Mercenary, only because he's in melee range all the time, so you'll get you'll get the orbs pretty much every time you kill something. And these are F tier on everybody else, because like I just said, you have to be in melee range to pick them up, and if you go in melee range, you're gonna die. And plus, you get four health per stack. Like, come on, that's, that's so bad in the late game. So F tier on everybody else. Lens Maker's Glasses, these are also S. Crits, you can crit on almost everything in the game. If it says base damage, you cannot crit on it, but but anything else in the game, which is just straight damage, so your auto attacks, uh, the missile launcher, equipment can crit too, everything can crit, so this is essentially 10% more damage per stack on everything, so it's absolutely nuts, S for sure. Hoof, I would give this thing an A. Mobility is very, very good in this game. This just gives you straight up 14%, so very good. Bustling Fungus, everybody loves this item. So obviously this thing is S plus on the Engineer. These are disgustingly good on Engineer. If you don't know the combo, you place your turrets, you stack them on top of one another, and then you can stand in the circle, and you basically get three times the effect of your Fungus because the Engineer's turret gets all of his items. The fact that you get more health per stack and it's a larger radius, and this thing gets huge if you get like 20 plus stacks you find a 3d printer oh s plus on the engineer sadly i would give these a d on everybody else because you have to stand still for this to activate for two seconds that's quite a long time especially in the mid to late game so you basically have to run away in a corner stand still hope no one comes out hope a titan doesn't put one of those pillars underneath you yeah it's just there's too too many situations where i can see this getting you killed so d on everybody else crowbar so i actually give a crowbar an a for burst build so if you're playing the artificer a royal capacitor as your main equipment and that's doing all your damage something that does burst then these are really really good because this is essentially multiplying it by 1.5 and then you're adding 0.3 to that 1.5 every stack for everything else I'll probably give this a C just because 90% health you're gonna blow through that amount of health and then these are totally useless after that so C on everyone that's not a burst build so moving on to the tri-tip dagger so 
I have to give this a B plus, not an A, definitely not an S, because you have to scale this with attack speed. There's no limit on the amount of bleeds you can put on an enemy, but there is a limit to your bleed chance. As in, if you have like 10 of these, then yeah, you get 150% bleed chance, but that 50%, that extra 50% does absolutely nothing. So 100% chance to bleed is the max. It has been confirmed. It's on the wiki. I'll put a clip up. And plus, this scales with base damage. So it, you can, if you crit, it does no more damage. It has no synergy with the actual damage of your attack, simply how fast you attack. So I have to give this thing a B plus. All right, moving on to the war banner. So I'll give this a C on the engineer. All your turrets get your items. So when you level up, you get three of these things. You still have to stand inside of the circle. It's a pretty good bonus if you do, but standing inside of one area for too long is gonna get you killed in the end game and even the mid game. So I wouldn't recommend this on really anybody, even the engineer. I'll give it a D on everybody else. So C on the engineer, D on everybody else. Moving on to the cautious slug here, I'll give this a C, it gives you passive health regeneration and it gives you more per stack. So it's not terrible. It stacks well with titanic neurals, for example, which give you additional flat regen and then this increases it by percent. So it's not terrible. It's not terribly useful either. So C. Personal shield generator, I will also give this a C. If you want to think about it as just a little bit of extra health, you can do that. However, it you can't leech your shield. Even if you convert it with transcendence, this still is separate from your shield pool. When you convert to transcendence, that is now your new health and this still is a health shield. So it won't leech, it won't do anything. So I'll give it a C. Med kit, okay, so this is interesting. This is F tier on everybody at all times, except on monsoon difficulty, which is the hardest difficulty, and only in the early game. So early game monsoon, I'd give this a C because this region here is actually quite good for early monsoon when you're trying to rush the teleporters. And if you get stacked by enemies, start getting swarmed, this can save your butt plenty of times. Other than that, this thing is pretty bad. So F for sure, just turn it into the 3D printer. Gasoline, I'll give this a C. It's great for mopping up groups. It gives you increased radius and increased damage per stack, but you have to get quite a few of these and and it scales off a of base damage. And there's a better item that I'll go over here in a second that just is straight up better than this. So I'll give it a C. Moving on to the stun grenade, these things get a D because they don't scale well into the end game because the later the game goes, the more bosses will actually spawn as regular enemies and you cannot stun bosses even if they are classified as a regular enemy. So the later the game goes, these get less useful. So I'll have to say that these are D tier. The fireworks, I'll give them a C. So it's a good cheese strategy. If you find a 3D printer, then yeah, go ahead, try your best, see what happens. But I'll give them a C tier because they're not that useful otherwise. Energy drink, I'll give this an A. Anything to do with mobility on this list is probably going to get an A. 30% movement speed while you're sprinting is really, really good. And you get 20% per stack. So very good item, give it an A. Backup magazines. So these are S plus on absolutely everybody except for the engineer. So on the engineer, your secondary skill is your mines and you start with 10 mines. So this doesn't add 10 mines again, it just adds one more mine. So it's essentially 10% as effective on the engineer, but your mines are still really good. So I'll give it a C on the engineer. Absolutely S plus on everybody else because your secondary skill is amazing. So S plus. Sticky bombs, everybody's favorite item. So I'll give these an S tier, not an S plus tier. Don't get me wrong, they're still insanely strong, but the only reason they don't get S plus is because you absolutely have to be attacking fast to proc as many of these as possible. On top of that, they're not that useful with just one or two. You have to get like six, seven, maybe 10 of these before they start pumping out damage. They get increased chance to proc per stack and increased damage per stack. They're one of the few on hit items that get both of these effects. On top of that, this gets 250% damage, not base damage, damage. So essentially what this this means is it double dips with critical strikes, meaning if your attack that procs the sticky bomb critically strikes, it's doubled in value, right? So this 250% is based off of that crit. Then the sticky bomb itself can also critically strike. So you get basically two for one with critical strikes. The sticky bombs are disgustingly good. Pick these things up. You wanna stack these on pretty much every character. The only exception is the Artificer, and I'll probably give these a B on the Artificer only because she attacks so slow and she has a charge-based auto attack and the rest of her skills have very low chance to proc. So I'll give these a B on the Artificer. Rusted Key, I'll give it a C. It's an okay item. It gives you a free chest when it comes down to it, but you have to find the chest. There's no indication on the map. There's no logo or anything. So I'll give it a C. Finally, armor piercing rounds. These things are disgusting. S tier for sure. So one of these items, you just get a 20% more multiplier to boss damage. It's crazy powerful. You only get 10% per stack, which is why I'm giving it an S, not an S plus. Once you get five or six of them, you probably don't need any more whatsoever. You're gonna feel this 10% bonus less and less the more you get. S tier for sure.
Okay, moving on to the uncommon items now. Started with the missile launcher. This thing gets an A. So 300% damage is a ton, especially 300% per stack. However, you don't get increased chance to proc, so I have to give this an A. The Will of the Wisp, this will get a B. AoE effects are generally pretty good. You only need a couple of them, which makes this even better. You don't really need like 10 of them. You just need one or two, maybe three. So anything that piles mobs together, the Will of the Wisp will chain and it will pretty much blow everything up. It's absolutely insane. And this is better than the gasoline because it just needs less stacks as you can see 350% damage and it's instant damage it's base damage yeah it's still instant damage versus the gasoline which is over time so this gets a b the hapu feather gives you one extra max jump and this thing gets an a very good it's utility you combine this with the mega jump artifact this thing's really good so extra jump who can complain about that and gets an a the ukulele so i'll actually give this thing a b not an a definitely not an s and the reason for that is yes it does 80 percent damage to aoe so three targets and there's a 25% chance to proc. That's pretty good. However, you don't get increased damage and you don't get increased proc chance per stack. You just get more targets, which is still pretty good. But this can also crit and apply on hit effects like sticky bombs. But because of these two reasons, I'll have to give this a B, not an A. Leeching Seed, I will give this an A for everybody but the Artificer. Like I said many times before now, the Artificer just attacks so much slower and therefore will heal so much less than everybody else that these aren't really worth. But these are A on everybody else because you stack enough attack speed and these these will start adding up quickly, especially if you get two or three of them. So A on the leeching seed. All right, Predatory Instinct. So it gives you more attack speed based on how much you crit, essentially. So you need to scale attack speed to get this effect constantly because the stacks of this fall off very quickly. So it stacks up to three times and the max cap is 30 and then you get 30% to that max cap every time, if that makes sense. So it's good, but because you need to constantly be hitting things for this to stay up, it only gets an A. It also gives you a hidden 5% increased crit chance. However, this does not stack. So if you get two Predatories, you do not get 10% crit. You only get the 5% once. And this is the same for the Harvester Scythe, which I'll go over here in a second. So Predatory gets an A. The Red Whip, I will give this a B. It's very good for getting around the map once you've killed everything, and especially when nothing is spawned. If you get this early on, especially where there's not a lot of enemies in general, this is a very good relic to get, or <laughs> item, it's not a relic, so B. All right, moving on to the Old War Stealth Kit. I'll give this thing a C plus, and the only reason for this right now is because the fire mobs, as we all know, the fire mobs are absolutely ridiculous. And actually, if this procs as you're on fire, it will remove the fire debuff. It's interesting. It does not state that it removes any CC or any debuffs, but it absolutely does remove the burn. I don't have a clip of it, but if you test it, <laughs> if you want to risk your whole run on top of that, go ahead, be my guest. But I'll give it a C plus because it's good. It gives you movement speed and visibility. You can run away, and the more damage you take, the higher chance it has to proc. So pretty good item, C plus. Moving on here to the Harvester Scythe. So like the Predatory Instincts, gives you 5% crit. This does not stack. So one Harvester Scythe will give you the same crit chance as 10 Harvester Scythe. However, Critical Strikes heal you for eight health and you get four health per stack. That's very, very strong. So this is an A plus on everybody but the Artificer. And I'm not gonna repeat myself 10 million times, but because the Artificer attacks so slow, this isn't very good on the Artificer. So D on the Artificer, but A plus on everybody else. This gives you a lot of health. Very fun to stack that item as well. Moving on to fuel cells, these things are nuts. S plus for sure. Equipment is very, very, very powerful in this game and it is essential to progressing the later stages for sure. And you can get some pretty nuts combos with some equipment. However, However, all that said, you get plus one equipment charge per stack and plus 15% cooldown reduction. The only downside to this is that this 15% does not scale linearly like the teddy bears before. I'll put up a clip of uh, the actual percentages, but you do not get 30% cooldown reduction if you have two of these. It doesn't, doesn't scale like that. Nonetheless, this is still an S+. Plus. It is so, so strong. Moving on to infusion now, I will give these an A+, plus because maximum health is always useful, right? That's what literally keeps you alive. The only downside to these is that the 100 per stack only happens one at a time regardless of how many of these you have. So let's say you have four infusions, so you have up to 400% health from the infusions. However, because you have four of them, you don't get four health per kill. You only get this one health per kill. So you have to charge from the first one all the way to however many you get. You have to kill that exact amount of enemies while you have the infusions. So it's kind of situational. The later the game goes on, as we all know, it gets way harder. So it's just increasing your chances of dying. So these are less effective as the game goes on. I mean, health is still very, very important, but I'll give these an A plus instead of a, uh, an S. Bandolier. I will give the bandolier a B plus on the mercenary and a C on the rest of everybody. B plus on the mercenary, because he is pretty much always in melee range. He's a melee class, obviously. So he will more than likely be able to pick these up 
and they're very powerful. They give you a percent chance to drop on kill, something that resets all of your cooldowns. So very strong. B plus on mercenary, C on the rest because you don't really want to go into melee range. It's good on the engineer because the engineer can kite around while his turrets do all the work so he can go pick them up. But I would still put it as a C even on the, the engineer. Berserker's Pauldron. So I will give this a B plus on everybody except for the Artificer. For the millionth time, Artificer doesn't attack fast. So anything with attack speed isn't that good on the Artificer. So it's a D on the Artificer. It's a B plus on the rest of everybody because you can pretty much keep this up. Unlike the Predatory Instincts, which falls up very quickly, this buff lasts for six seconds flat. So there's no falling off. Once you have this, it lasts for six seconds and then you get four seconds per stack. So pretty good. Gives you a really nice bonus. 50% movement speed, 100% attack speed. If you kill a lot of enemies who are close to a boss, let's say you have a primordial cube, so you kill a lot of enemies, you get this buff and then you just DPS to the boss. So you get 100% attack speed for free. Very good item. Give it a B plus. The Rose Buckler. So I will give this an A on the Huntress and the Engine and the B on the rest. So A on the Huntress because you can attack while you're sprinting, no downside to it. 30 armor per stack, that's really, really strong. So A on the Huntress. On the Engineer, you can actually do the same thing and my Engineer Guide will be coming out pretty soon. You can attack while you're sprinting on the Engineer. There's a quick downtime. Essentially what you have to do is you have to charge your attack and then press the sprint button and as long as you hold the left click, you'll continue charging the attack and you can attack while you're sprinting. And then as soon as the attack goes off, you just have to charge up another one, press sprint again so there's like maybe um i don't know half a second not even that of downtime so you can pretty much sprint while you attack so that's why it's an a on the uh, the engineer as well but it's a, a b on the rest of everybody because you can still run away from stuff and get this armor buff so you don't get one shot when you're trying to run away Rinald's ban i'll give this a b it's okay the damage is way less than the other ban which we'll go over in a second but you don't get increased chance to proc her stack and you don't get any benefit from the slow the slow isn't that good in the first place the chrono bobble gives you a guaranteed slow for almost this amount it's like 60 percent, 66 percent. so this isn't that useful the damage is nice but again, the chance doesn't go up on hit, so it's a it's a B. Kiara's ban, I give this a B plus, not a B. So it has the same 8% chance to proc on hit, which does not go up on stack, but it deals 500% damage and you get more damage per stack. Also, this runic flame tornado stays longer. It's not just one hit, it stays and it hits multiple times. So it does way more damage than the other ban. And also I should mention that both of these bans are a D on the Artificer because for the two millionth time now, Artificer attacks really slow. Anything that has a chance to proc and requires attack speed not very good on the artificer so the chrono bobble i'm conflicted because cc in this game should be pretty strong but this is a 60 percent slow for one second i'll give it a d because this slow will not prove to be that effective later in the game especially when you're fighting imp overlords and titans and magma worms and beetles things that generally stay in one place and the scariest part is when they hone in on you i don't think it even slows the magma worms i don't even think you can slow bosses honestly so i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend this thing so d on uh, on everybody finally the wax quail i will give this an a jumping while sprinting boosts you forward very noticeable boost keeps your momentum going it probably adds some momentum so this is a very good item definitely mobility related a on everybody okay now we're moving on to the legendary items the brilliant behemoth number one this thing is s on everybody you can think of this bonus 60 percent damage as just 60 percent more damage to absolutely everything so anything that does damage this will always apply this 60 percent bonus so this is absolutely insane great item item 60% more damage it doesn't give you more damage per stack that's the only downside if this did oh boy this would be s plus easy it might even be the best item in the game if it gave more damage per stack but still very very strong s for sure ceremonial dagger this is also an s the combo with this thing and some aoe so the will of the wisps plus ceremonial dagger that combo is disgusting you can kill the entire map if you kill one pack of mobs all the daggers will go out find their enemies because they're homing daggers like it says right here yeah it's only 150 percent damage and it's base damage but you get so many dagger you get three per enemy so you get tons and tons and tons of these things s for sure on this thing. frost relic i would give this a c on the mercenary and an f on everybody else yes it does something on everybody else but it's a very very small radius and there's nothing on the wiki and uh from my testing too multiple stacks of this does not increase the radius or the damage so there's really no point to getting this item on anybody but the mercenary because you have to be in melee range it's such a small radius and on top of that it's not even 100 damage so c on the mercenary he's always in melee range like i said he's a melee class obviously happiest mask i'll give this a b it spawns something that attacks for you but more importantly it draws aggro off of the enemies and onto it so i'll give it a b that's pretty much all you want it for yes it does damage but Honestly, it's not really worth it for the damage. It's much better to have it for the tanking potential. I call this thing the Mega Jump. It's the Head 5 tv 2 I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. So this is an S. Not only does it increase your jump height, 
It has this thing right here, so you deal tons of damage if you get uh, get really high in the air, and this damage increases based on your height. So there's some momentum stuff where you can be against a wall, something hits you, and you jump at the same time, and you go skyrocketing into there. It's absolutely nuts. So in those cases, this will deal tons and tons and tons of damage. However, I only get this thing for the jump height, and more importantly, this is hidden. You don't take fall damage. So no matter what with this item, you will not take fall damage. So for that reason, plus the jump height, this gets an S. Easy S. Nuka Hana's opinion. This thing is absolutely nuts on the engineer. S plus on the engineer for sure. However, this gets an F on the artificer and a B on everybody else. So let me explain real quick. The S plus on the engineer, because your turrets get these items, obviously it's the whole point of the engineer, and your turrets are healing all the time. Even if you just have one fungus, one or two fungi, and you will melt things because they will be launching these skulls all of the time. B on everybody else because yeah, everyone else heals, but definitely nowhere close to the amount as the engineer. So this won't be as noticeable for your damage. Still really good though. And then an F on the artificer because Yet again, the artificer attacks so slow, he's healing way less than, sorry, she is healing way less than everybody else. So therefore this thing is going off way less than everybody else. So F on the artificer. Ooh, Tesla coil. This is also an S, but it's an S on absolutely everybody. Tesla coil is insane because all you have to do is run around and this thing will activate. You can literally, if you wanted to, you could pull the whole game by just running in circles around mobs and they would eventually die from the Tesla coil. Like this thing is stupidly powerful. This is probably S plus on the engineer though, because the turrets get one as well. So you just have so many lightning beams coming out. It's ridiculously strong, but this is really, really, really good on absolutely everybody. All right, moving on to the 57 leaf clover. This thing gets an S on absolutely everybody. What this sentence means is anything that has a chance to happen will be rolled again if it does not happen so if you have one sticky bomb you have a five percent chance on hit to proc it if it doesn't happen the first time it will roll again that five percent chance so it's not quite a doubling of the odds again i'll put up a clip of uh the wiki you can also just go on the wiki and, and look at this stuff but it's not quite a doubling effect but it's very strong nonetheless and if you get one or two of these things or even more than that these things become very 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 powerful so s for sure on everybody all right the sentient meat hook i'll give this a b plus on everybody except for the artificer i'll give it a c because again anything on hit on the artificer is not as good as everyone else because she attacks very slow so b plus on everybody else because it gives you a chance to fire hooks which clump enemies together and does a little bit of damage when it does it. The clumping is the most important part because it's essentially a pseudo primordial cube at that point. It clumps the enemies together and then your on kill effects like uh, Will of the Wisps or Gasoline or anything else can finish everything off as long as you kill one enemy. It clumps them all together. Very strong item B plus. Alien head. This thing is S plus. I mean reduce skill cooldown by 25%. Why would you not want that? It's insanely powerful. Definitely, definitely S plus on absolutely everybody. There's no point in the game where you do not want your skills to be up. So this, there's no downside to this. So the Soulbound Catalyst here, I'll give this an S only if you have the Gesture of the Drown and Fuel Cells, or just Fuel Cells. So the Fuel Cells, like mentioned before, they give you one additional charge on your equipment and it reduces the equipment cooldown. This, if you have an equipment that kills stuff, so for example, the Royal Capacitor or the Missile Launcher, for example, then this will start becoming extremely effective for those two items. So S if you have the Gesture of the Drown Fuel Cells, if you don't have any of that, then it's an A, because it's still very powerful to uh, reduce your cooldown on your equipment. Very, very powerful. So Dio's best friend. This item is an S plus on everybody because it gives you a free life. It's pretty self-explanatory. However, on the engineer, this gets S plus plus. It's the only item on the list. It's just in a different league on the engineer because the turrets get it. So your turrets getting another life is absolutely powerful as crap. So S plus plus on the engineer. S plus on everyone else. Hard light afterburner. This is also S plus on everybody two stacks of your utility skill your utility skill is usually very very powerful and it reduces the cooldown harley afterburner very strong item s plus for sure wake of vultures this one's interesting don't even pick this up <laughs> because it's bugged right now if you pick this up and you get the lightning mobs so when you kill an elite you gain its power for eight seconds right if you kill a lightning mob, what happens is half of your health is converted to shields. When you kill the mob and you get the shields, it doesn't give you the shields right away. You have to wait for the shield to recharge. So when you kill a lightning mob, you lose half of your health instantly. So it is such a bad item right now because of that bug. Don't even pick this up. Wait till the patch notes come out that say they fixed this item and then you can start picking it up. But even then it probably won't be that high. However, I'll save that for when the patch notes actually happen. All right, brain stocks, I will give it a B only because it is super, super situational. You have to kill not a regular monster, but an 
elite monster. And then you have a three second window where you can spam all your skills for free. It's really powerful, but you have to kill an elite monster. Yes, later in the game, elite monsters will spawn absolutely all the time. So it was definitely better as the game goes on, but because it's so situational, I'll give it a B. Finally, the last legendary item here, the Rejuve Rack. If you can guess, it's an S plus on somebody. That's right, it's the Engineer, because Engineer heals so much more than everybody else. So heal 100% more, no downsides whatsoever, S plus Engineer. S on everybody else because you just heal more. It, this affects your regen as well. Everybody has passive regen. If you don't have Leeching Seeds or the Harvester Scythe, you still are passively regening your HP. But on the Artificer, again, I have to give it a lower rating. I'll give it a C on the Artificer only because you're really not leeching that much. So at worst, it's just increasing your passive regen. You're not going to be healing that much regardless. So C on the Artificer. All right, now moving on to the boss items. There's only two of them. We got the Titanic Neural, which gives you flat health and flat health regen. I'll give it an A plus on everybody. It's more health, more regen. Pretty good. This regen scales with uh, the Rejuve Rack, which we just talked about. So pretty good item. A plus on absolutely everybody. Queen's Gland. I'll give this a B. Much like the Happiest Mask, it just summons something that will draw aggro for you. Yeah, it does some damage. In the earlier stages, the damage is very noticeable. But other than that, you just really use it because it draws aggro. So B on everybody. Okay, now we're going on to Lunar items. First one is Shaped Glass. I will give Shaped Glass an A on everybody with the caveat that you have to mitigate this very heavily. So you either need to have tons of mobility, tons of bears to block everything, or you need to be Transcendence, which gives you 50% more HP, which will essentially negate this first one but if you get another one then it starts affecting your health so this gives you double damage but it cuts your health in half it's very strong if you are not getting hit a bunch later in the game you're pretty much only going to die to one shots so cutting your health in half yeah it re increases your chance of getting one shot however the damage is so much later in the game that you probably get one shot if you get hit anyway this is very good because it doubles your damage so i'll give it an a on everybody moving on to the brittle crown essentially what this item's saying is you hit stuff you gain gold you get hit you lose gold on the engineer and the hunter this gets an A plus on everybody else it gets a C so for the engineer your turrets get this effect so when your turrets hit stuff they will gain you gold however if your turrets get hit they do not lose you gold that is so powerful so you run around like a madman on the engineer put your turrets down they'll just hit a bunch of stuff pop 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 you'll get all the gold for it and as long as you don't get hit you won't lose the gold so very powerful on the huntress she has her rain of arrows which hits very quickly hits multiple enemies so it'll stack this gold very quickly her glaive hits multiple enemies and she's super mobile and can easily dodge stuff with her blink so this gets an a plus on the huntress as well c on everybody else because they're not quite as mobile as the huntress and they don't get the upside as the engineer so they're gonna get hit a lot more often plus if you block the hit, so right here, lose gold equal to the amount you are hit for. If you block the hit, you don't lose the maximum health. So this doesn't come into effect. However, you will still lose the gold, even if you block the hit. And it's a pre-mitigated hit, as in there's no damage reduction at all for the hit. So later in the game, you get hit once by a big hit from a Titan or a, a Beetle Queen or something, and goodbye all of your gold. It's really, really difficult to recover from that stuff later in the game. So see on everybody else for that reason. Moving on to Transcendence. This gets an A on everybody except for the Engineer. It gets an F. Do not pick this up on the Engineer because you need to heal. And you do not heal. You don't regen. You don't leech anything with shields. So... The entire class right now revolves around healing and regen on your turrets. So do not pick this up on the engineer. However, everybody else gets an A because it, it's, it is super conditional. So if you have harvester scythes, leeching seeds, you're getting tons of leech, you're getting tons of, tons of regen. Don't pick this up because like I just said, you don't regen anymore. However, if you're not at that point, then you just get a huge health pool and you don't have to rely on leech or regen ever again. You just have to kite stuff around, wait for your shield to recharge and then continue. So big boost to the health, that's why it gets an A. Moving on to Corpse Bloom. Sadly, this has to get an F on everybody right now. Yes, you heal 100% more, but the Rejuve Rack, which we just went over, doesn't have anything else. It just, you heal 100% more. Woo, really good, right? This, all healing is applied over time. You can only heal for 10% of your health per second. So at best, if you make a massive hit and you go down to like 20% HP, it'll take eight seconds for your health to regen eight seconds that's such a long time in the end game i can't overstate that so this is very 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 bad in the late game so any item that gets worse as the game goes on is going to get a low rating from me but because you can only heal 10 percent of your hp per second i would not pick this up on anybody right now please let me know in the comments if that's not how it works if there's something i'm missing out but healing 100 more 
but only being able to recharge 10% per second, that is not worth it on anybody in my opinion. So F, gesture of the drown. I love this item. S plus if you have the equipment and you have the fuel cells. So the equipment, you need something with damage. You can get like a promoter cube and it'll spam it all the time. However, if you get like the missile launcher or the royal capacitor, something with a low cooldown and that hits really hard, this thing is disgusting, especially when you compare it with fuel cells. So the combo of this plus uh, damage equipment plus fuel cells, absolutely insane. S plus for sure. All other times, I would still pick it up. It's a fun item to use. It gets a B if you don't have that huge combo like I was talking about. All right, so that's it for the passive items. Let's move on to the active items, the equipment here. So starting with the disposable missile launcher, I will give this an S plus only if you have the gesture of the drown like we just talked about and the fuel cells every other time i'll give it a c it's really strong once you get some fuel cells up and going but you really need the gesture of the drown before this damage starts becoming really powerful other than that i would always recommend a royal capacitor or a bfg or a cube which we'll go over all those in a second foreign fruit i'll give this a c on everybody right instantly heal for 50 percent of your maximum health pretty good never going to be in a bad spot however i prefer cc and damage for my equipment not really this healing it's good in a sticky situation for sure don't pick it up if you have transcendence it's not going to do anything if you have transcendence so see on everybody cube i will give an a plus so it's not damage however it has a massive black hole that sucks in all the enemies and it clumps them all together so if you combine that with some will of the wisps or some of those bands or gasoline anything that kills tons of stuff quickly because they're all clumped together it'll really really chain react and it'll be super powerful so a plus on everybody ocular hud so i'm gonna play it safe on this one i'm giving this a c it's really good in the early game when you have no crit this gives you essentially double damage for eight seconds pretty good in the late game from what i've heard i haven't done this in testing and nothing on the wiki supports this but from what i've heard this critical strike chance is separate from your actual crits so if you have 10 lens maker glasses 100 crit chance in the late game this 100 crit chance is separate essentially you'll be dealing four times damage for as long as this thing's up. So if that's the case, this thing is A, easily an A, because you wanna pick this up. If you're an auto attack character like the Multi or the Huntress or anyone that is stacking soldiers around you, let's be honest, then four times damage for eight seconds, that's really powerful. But if that's not the case, that's gonna be a C on everybody. Back up. Yeah, back up, bro. So this is a B if you have the gesture of the drown and the fuel cells. Yeah, that combo is insanely powerful, but it's really powerful with literally anything that does damage. So the backup, I would say, does not as much damage as the Royal Capacitor or the BFG or the Missile Launcher. So if you have that insane combo, there are definitely better items to use than the backup, in my opinion. Of course, this might this might be different for you guys. You might be using the backup because you just put it once. You don't have to aim. They just do their thing. However, it's a B for me if you have the combo. If you don't have the combo, I would never pick this thing up, but I'll give it a D because the damage just is not justifiable. Four strike drones, 25 seconds. If you have no fuel cells no gesture it's just not worth it so d if you don't have the combo crayon accumulate this is the bfg like i was talking about big freaking gun from doom right so you fire tendril it does 600 percent damage per second and then it explodes for a butt ton more damage so this is an s and only in the early game or if you have a gesture of the drowning fuel cells so early game this thing is so powerful however the later the game goes the charge time on this thing is pretty long it takes at least four seconds to charge if not a little bit longer than that before it fires so in the late game it's not that powerful because you have to sit still you have to aim it constantly you have to wait for it to shoot out then you can start running around and actually kiting again in the late game i would have to give it a b the charge time is just simply too long however every other time if you and if you have the gesture of the drowning fuel cells then it's absolutely awesome you never have to aim it you just let it do its thing it's an s all right going on to the milky chrysalis I'll just give this a C. Yeah, it lets you fly. It gives you some movement speed. I don't personally use this thing, but I've seen people use it very good. Free mobility for 15 seconds. Not bad, right? So I go to C. Royal Capacitor. This is my favorite equipment right here. This gets an S plus if you have the gesture, soulbound, fuel cells, any of that stuff. If you have that big combo, like I've mentioned plenty of times now, S plus. This thing is insanely powerful because it's only 20 second cooldown. Like that's that's nuts. This is really, really powerful. The rest of the time though, I would give it an S. It's an instant strike and the range is pretty ridiculous. Plus you can see things through walls. So the way this thing works is a little indicator will pop up on your screen saying your equipment hotkey, which is Q by default. And then you just press the Q and boom, it goes and zaps something. It's also an AOE. So it does damage to nearby monsters. It's very powerful if you stack up monsters on top of one another, especially bosses. If bosses spawn for the first time, bam, call the lightning strike, hits all the bosses. Really good item. Crowdfunder, if you're stacking on hit effects, this thing 
thing is a B because it does proc your on-head effects, so it's not terrible. However, it just takes way too long to wind up to an actual good DPS amount, so I'll have to give it a D. I really wouldn't pick it up if you're not stacking on-head effects, honestly. B if you are, D if you're not. Gnarled Wood Sprite, I'll give this an A on group play and on the multi, and I'll give it a C on everybody else. So in group play, this is good because you just send it to your friends and they heal for 10% of your HP instantly. On the multi, you have two equipment slots. So if you have this in one of your slots and you, you retool, which is your R key, then you switch back to the Wood Sprite, it'll heal you for this 10% health. I guess it's counting it as it's sending it back to you. So if you spam the R key, which is, it's very spammable, there's not really a big cooldown on it, then you'll just heal for 10% of your HP up. Multi, this gets an A. On everybody else, it gets a C because this passive region is just trickling and it's not that powerful. I'd much rather have a cube or a capacitor or missiles or pretty much anything else. So C on everybody else. Finally, the radar scanner. I'll give this a D. It does something. If you're going super fast in the late game and you really just need to see the chest real quick, then I guess you can pick it up. If you're watching this and you're super late game, then you probably don't need that recommendation in the first place, right? However, just learn the spawns on the map. You, you, it doesn't take that long. Learn where the chests go, learn where the altars are. You'll figure it out. Other than that, this thing's totally useless, so D. Moving on to the lunar items. So we have the glowing meteorite. I'll give this a C. I'm putting it in the middle. I'm playing safe than sorry. I personally don't use this thing because it damages you and your allies. And it's so random. It is so, so, so random. I wouldn't rely on it for damaging enemies. And especially because it has a chance to damage yourself. Plus it's a pretty long cooldown. So I'll give it a C. You could probably pull this thing off with the gesture of the drowned fuel cell thing. It would be, be really fun to try and dodge everything. I'll give it a C. Moving on to the hellfire tincture here. I'll give this a B on the mercenary and an F on absolutely everybody else. So the reason for this is you have to be basically in melee. It's like the frost icicles, the frost relic. You have to be in melee range for this to be effective. And you don't want to be in melee range on anybody except for people you have to be as in the mercenary, the only melee class here. If you do have another mercenary, it's a B, but you have to mitigate it with leech or transcendence, which gives you just more health in general. So it's strong in the mercenary. I would definitely recommend trying it out a few times, but on everybody else, I wouldn't bother because you have to be in melee range and that's just way too situational. Finally, for the lunar items, the effigy of grief, it does something. I'll give it a D. The, the slow is not that useful, but the armor reduced, yeah, it gives you a little bit more damage, but again, it's melee range. You have to place it. You don't throw it or anything. You just set it where you are and all characters have this effect. So you are slowed and you have your armor reduced. So you take more damage. All in all, not that good of a night. I won't give it a D because you can try it out. It does something. And last but not least, we got some secret stuff here. The elite equipment. As a disclaimer, all of these need more testing and more info and all of them have the potential to be higher ranks or lower, depending on if they're bad. But for now, I'm going to give every single one of these a C. So the elite equipment has is a rare chance to drop from ultra elites only. So ultra elites would be the overloading worm and the fire mobs and the colored elites. If they have a color to them, they're an ultra. The fire one just gives you the fire trail. So if anyone steps on the fire trail, they get burned. A lightning one, you get lightning orbs on hit and you get half of your health converted into energy shield. If this is bugged like the wake of vultures, then you probably shouldn't pick this up right now. Fortune, I literally have no idea what this does. The wiki page has absolutely nothing on it. So if you have the info on this or any of them, please let me know. Who knows what this one does? And then finally, aspect to ice, you slow people on hit. This one is safe to say, probably a D or an F because slows, like I mentioned, probably D, not very useful, right? So these are interesting. All right, and that does it for this tier list. Hopefully this was more objective for you all. I really did my best to dissect all of the feedback and the criticism from last tier list and put it in this tier list and make it as objective as possible. If you have any recommendations, if you have any changes you'd like to see to the list, if you think this item was good and I said it was bad, if you think this item was bad, I said it was good, let me know in the comments. I will be reading absolutely everything. Hope you enjoyed and I hope this helps you out.